Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on stable and unstable tachycardia. So the rules for sinus tachycardia are that for regularity, the RR intervals are regular and the overall rhythm is regular. The rate is over 100 BPM, but usually less than 170 BPM. And the, there's one P wave in front of every QRS. The P waves appear uniform. The PR interval measures between 0.12 and 0.2 seconds in duration. The PR interval is consistent. And the QRS complex measures less than 0.12 seconds. For atrial flutter, the regularity is the atrial rate is regular. The ventricular rate will be regular, but only if the AV node conducts the impulses in a consistent manner. Otherwise, the ventricular rate will be irregular. The atrial rate is normally between 250 to 350. Ventricular rate depends on conduction through the AV node to the ventricles. The P waves will be well-defined and have a sawtooth pattern to them. And for the PR interval, due to the unusual configuration of P waves, this interval is not measured during atrial flutter. For the QRS complex, it will measure less than 0.12 seconds. For AFib and irregular narrow complex tachycardia, the RR intervals are irregular, therefore the overall rhythm is irregular. Um, the ventriculars conduct from different atrial foci, causing them irregularity. Otherwise, the ventricular rate will be irregular. The atrial rate usually exceeds 350. If the ventricular rate is 60 and 100 BPM, this is known as controlled AFib. If the ventricular rate is more than 100, it's considered AFib with rapid ventricular response, or RVR, also known as uncontrolled AFib. The P wave, due to the atria firing so rapidly from multiple foci, there are no obvious P waves in the rhythm. The baseline appears chaotic because the atria are fibrillating, therefore there's no P waves that are produced. For the PR interval, because there's no P waves, the PR interval cannot be measured. And for the QRS complex, less than 0.12 seconds in length. So this is the adult tachycardia with pulse algorithm. So first you're going to want to assess the signs and symptoms. The heart rate is typically greater than 150 beats per minute. You need to identify and treat underlying causes. So maintain a patent airway and assist breathing if necessary. If hypoxemic, administer oxygen. Cardiac monitor to identify rhythm. Monitor blood pressure and pulse oximetry, gain IV access, and assess the 12 lead ECG. Then you may, if the persistent tachycardia is causing hypotension, acutely altered mental status, signs of shock, chest pain, or acute heart failure, then you're going to go into synchronized cardioversion, considering sedation and considering adenosine if regular and narrow. Um, if those are not being caused, then um, is the wide QRS greater than or equal to 0.12 seconds? If so, consider adenosine only if regular and monomorphic. Consider antiarrhythmic infusion or consider expert consultation. If it is not, then you would want to perform either vagal remover maneuvers, um, do adenosine if regular, um, beta blockers or calcium channel blockers, or consider specialist consultation. Don't forget, we offer online ACLS certification on our site. You can find a link in the description. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be on your own time with an online course or in an in-classroom setting. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. We will catch you next time.